it's not that cut and dry. You don't wanna be sitting in that meeting Googling, that's just my imagination. But you don't remember every little detail so that your future self doesn't hate your past self. These are 10 things you need to know if you want to be a data analyst. Hi, my name's Urvi. I've been working as a data analyst for a couple of years. And if you clicked on this video, you must be an aspiring data analyst or wanting to be in the data world in some way as well. Well, here are the 10 things that I wish I knew before I got in this field. Let's get right into it. Number one is that data analyst is a very broad job title. Before getting into this field, I thought that data analyst was a very well-defined job title. Well, it turns out it's not that cut and dry. A data analyst job can involve anything from building dashboards to actually running analyses in Python to borderline data engineering tasks. The key here to remember is that when you're looking and applying to different data analyst jobs, you really need to look through the job description and ask questions in the interview if you have one to understand what the majority of the job entails. Then you'll know if this is more of an analysis job, it's leaning into data engineering or more of a dashboard creation job. I actually have a video on the different types of roles a data analyst can take. I'll link it up here if you're interested. Now, building off of that, number two is that sometimes you will do more than just data analysis tasks. Now, if you notice in the previous point, I said you can look through the job description and ask questions in the interview to determine what majority of the job entails. And that is because while 80% of your job may be classic data analysis tasks like gathering the data, cleaning the data, visualizing the data, and so on, about 20% of the time you may be doing some other data related but not necessarily analysis related tasks as well. Sometimes at a company, a task will come up that requires someone who knows the data well enough, has a little bit of technical skill, and a lot of times the skill set of a data analyst fits this description. So for example, at my job, majority of the time I do work on data analysis, but sometimes I've also been asked to help out on things like researching a different AI tool that we can use or helping a little bit with the ETL process or even testing out something that the database team has built. And these things have probably taken up about 15 or 20% of my time. So as an aspiring data analyst, you know, just be aware that sometimes you'll do a little bit more than just data analysis. Number three is that you definitely don't need to be a math genius, but having basic statistical knowledge is really good to have. I know there's a lot of videos out there that say that you don't have to be a math whiz to be a data analyst, and that is definitely true. However, you should have a good grasp of basic statistical concepts like distributions and probabilities. These are important to know so that you know when and which statistical tests are appropriate to to run on your data. Additionally, if you work on a team with a lot of people that have a strong math or statistical background, these math terms are going to come up in meetings. And trust me, you don't want to be sitting in that meeting googling what a certain distribution looks like as they're talking about it. Not that, you know, I've ever done that. Number four is that ambiguity is just part of the job. Before I became a data analyst, I always imagined it to be this job where a stakeholder comes to me, they ask me a very simple, very specific question like, how many sales did we have in the month of June? And I would go and pull those numbers. Now, sometimes that does happen, but most of the time, that's just my imagination. Most of the times when you talk to stakeholders, they have very general questions. These are generally ones that are something that can inform the strategic initiatives of the business. So instead of how many sales did we have in June, they may ask something like, how can we increase our sales over the summer months? I, as a data analyst, then have to divide that question up into more specific analytical questions. And there's a bunch of different ways this can go. And this is where I have to use my knowledge of what is important to the business and what might be important to the stakeholder to kind of understand what they're looking for. It's not a clear cut question. It is kind of ambiguous. And this is a space you 
kind of just have to learn to live in as a data analyst. Working in this ambiguity and maybe not incredibly clear requirements is a part of the job. The fifth thing I wish I knew is that documentation is so important. As a data analyst, you work on multiple different projects and multiple different iterations of those projects. So let's say you're working on project one for three months, you create an initial deliverable, let's say it's a dashboard or an analysis, you hand it off to a stakeholder, and then you move on to project two. Well, three months into project two, your stakeholder from project one might come back and say they have some additional questions or an additional analysis they want you to run. Well, it's been three months since you worked on project one, and chances are you don't remember every little detail about that analysis. Well, if you have documented how you gathered the data, your methodology, assumptions you made about the data, your queries and all of that, chances are your current self will thank your past self because it is now very easy to pick work back up on project one without having to do a lot of research into why you did certain things. So when you're working on a project, it is important to document your work so that your future self doesn't hate your past self. Trust me, I know, I have hated my past self so many times. And if you're a student right now, you're not working as a data analyst yet, start building out ways to create documentation into your workflows so that once you're on the job as a data analyst, it's just something that comes naturally to you and is just part of your process. Number six is that communication is a huge part of being a data analyst. Now I know this is something that is generally told to people that are aspiring to be a data analyst. But before I was actually working in the field, I thought this mostly just meant presentations. And yes, data analysts do need good presentation skills, but you have to communicate with st stakeholders outside of your presentations as well. You have to meet with stakeholders to understand what types of data insights would be useful to them. You have to answer data questions. You might have to explain data processes. And yes, you do have to do presentations to explain your data analysis results to a stakeholder. So when you look at all of this communication that's happening, you start to realize what a big and important part of the job communication is for a data analyst. And speaking of communication, the seventh thing I wish I knew was how crucial it is to learn how to explain things in a simple and straightforward way. You know that Reddit thread, explain it to me like I'm five? Well, that skill that the people who answer those questions have are one is one that is so important in data analysis. Being able to explain technical or statistical or analytical concepts in a way that anyone could understand makes your data analysis so much more impactful and really makes you stand out as a data analyst. Because at the end of the day, the analysis you do is useless if no one understands what the impact of that analysis is or even what that analysis means. Now, you don't have to explain things to people like they're five years old. You know, the people you are presenting your analysis to are really intelligent people and have really deep knowledge of the business that they're working in. But you can't just use a bunch of technical jargon when you're explaining these things. You really have to learn how to explain things in a straightforward way. And this is a skill that I have been working on for as long as I've been a data analyst. It's one I'm still working on, but it is definitely a skill you have to build as a data analyst. The eighth thing is that you don't have to know every tool coming into the job, but you should have processes set up for learning. When I was first applying to data analyst roles, I remember looking through the job description and being so completely overwhelmed by the skills section. Some jobs had so many different tools listed on it. Python, R, Tableau, Power BI, Excel, SQL, Snowflake, Databricks, and more. However, over time, I learned that a lot of times these companies are not expecting you to know 100% of the tools listed in their job description. As long as you know one in each category, like one major programming language, one dashboarding tool, one cloud platform, that generally is enough and they will allow you to learn the rest on the job. For example, one time I applied to a job where they wanted their analysts to know R. Well, I knew Python. Luckily, they were open to me learning R on the job. Since I already knew one programming language, they knew that learning another programming language 
is not too difficult. So this just goes to show you don't always have to meet 100% of the requirements on a job listing to apply, but you definitely have to have processes in place to learn the tools that you may be missing. And if you're looking for learning resources for data analysts, I actually have a video on that that I'll link up here if you're interested. Number nine is to pick a domain or industry that you would enjoy working in for a long time. When I was in grad school, we had an assignment to interview a data analyst or data scientist at our company. I ended up interviewing a data scientist and I asked him for tips on how to be a successful data analyst or data scientist. And he said that a successful data analyst is one that has strong domain knowledge. Strong domain knowledge means that you have knowledge about the business of the industry that you're working in. And this can be things like healthcare, finance, retail, sports, just to name a few. And he said the way to get really strong domain knowledge is by working in one industry for a long time. Yes, you can switch domains, but once you switch a domain, you have to build up that industry knowledge from scratch all over again. So if you do have to stay in an industry for a while to get good domain knowledge to then stand out as a data analyst, that means you may be in one industry for a while. So when you're picking where you wanna do your data analysis in, like let's say in healthcare or in finance or in retail, pick one that you think you would enjoy working in for a long time. Because to build up that domain knowledge, you may be working in it for more than just a couple of years. And the 10th and final thing I wish I knew before I became a data Data analyst is that you have to be able to explain your analytical decisions. When you're doing a data analysis, each analytical decision you make, like which data to include, which data to drop, the data cleaning steps you're taking, the models and statistical analysis you're applying to the data should all have solid reasoning behind them and you should be able to defend those reasons and explain why you made a certain decision. I didn't realize how important this would be until I started working as a data analyst. But a lot of times when you're presenting the analysis of your results, you will have a stakeholder that'll ask, why did you only include this data? Or why did you include this subpopulation and not this subpopulation? Or, why did you look at the analysis this way instead of a different way? And you have to be able to explain your choices and explain your decisions in order for your data analysis to come across as credible and something that a stakeholder can trust. And luckily, this is not a skill that you have to wait to build until you become a data analyst. If you're a student and you're working on projects for your classes, or if you're an aspiring data analyst who's doing projects on the side to build those data analysis skills, as you're doing the projects, you can practice explaining why you're making certain data decisions. For example, when you're looking for what data to use, why are you using that data set instead of a different data set? When you're removing certain columns but keeping others, how are you deciding which ones you keep and which ones you remove? And why are some columns important while others aren't? You know, why are you choosing to use a certain statistical test over a different one? And what is the impact or change in your analysis if you use a different statistical test. These are all things you can practice in the projects that you're working on even before you become a data analyst. All right, so those are the 10 things I wish I knew before I became a data analyst. Did any of these surprise you? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're watching this, I would really love to know who my audience is. Are a lot of you students that are aspiring to be data analysts and you're going to school for this? Are some of you career switchers? Maybe you're in a different field right now and you're hoping to get into data analysis. I would love to know. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful to you. If it was, I would love if you considered subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.